My family is just destroyed. The question why will always be in my head. It's horrendous to think that there might actually be people who die because our strategy is not implemented. What was life like growing up with your children? Very busy. It was a very busy and noisy household. Three boys, two girls. Not much between them in age. This is Patricia Ferrin. Creative when I come in the garden. Love watching the growth and thinking that there is life. There's life in plants and nurturing them and being feeling like Prince Charles here talking to the plants like. Patricia has lost three sons to suicide in the last seven years. Have you been to my house to America? When Nell first died, I was up every week, flowers, fussing about. Karen died twice I went up. Stephen died. Day of his burial, that was it. I happened up, that was a year ago, because I can't go up because I'm a scared of falling apart, breaking, excited, sweating, digging the night. Saying, You should be here with me, you should be here with me, you should be here. That's hard, it really is hard, you know. <laughs> Patricia's youngest son, Niall, took his own life in 2011. Her second son, Kieran, took his own life in 2014 and Patricia's eldest son, Stephen, took his own life in September 2017. Stephen, in the last few weeks before he died, he kept saying to me his mind was broken. It was hell, because he never got much sleep. He paced them floors at night time. I never got much sleep with him, because you're constantly aware of him, walking them floors. Uh, we have been to mental health, begged them, begged them to offer help, and I felt as if they didn't listen. On Friday the 8th of September, 2017, Stephen's mental health began to get worse. They asked him if they got him somewhere, would he go? Yes, he would go in somewhere. I says, right, that's okay. Well, you're gonna to have to wait the Monday, there's nothing we can do on Monday. And I just got up and here's me, I just walked like that and I went, right, that's fine. And I just turned back and I came back to the door and I went, I got my finger and I went, we haven't got the Monday. Just remember them words. You're not, you're not giving me much help here. There are many different sides to Northern Ireland. It's a complex place. And why the suicide rate is so high here is a really difficult question to answer. The reasons why a person takes their own life are also really complex and individual. And every suicide is different. Professor Siobhan O'Neill has researched trauma and suicidal behaviour in Northern Ireland. She thinks there could be several reasons for Northern Ireland's high suicide rate. We could look at the economic climate in Northern Ireland. We're only just seeing the effects of austerity and we know that when there's economic stressors in a population, we, we see an increase in the suicides there. We have some marginalised groups in Northern Ireland, such as our LGB and T community here, who have really high rates of mental health problems and, and suicidal behaviour. The legacy of the Troubles has had its impact on the mental health of uh, the population here and that's still being felt in Northern Ireland and we through our research here at Ulster University have shown that exposure to traumatic events relating to the troubles is likely to increase your risk of suicidal behaviour. The Troubles, a 30-year conflict in Northern Ireland which ended with the Good Friday Peace Agreement in 1998. Over 3,600 people were killed in the violence. But since the peace agreement in 1998, more people have died from suicide in Northern Ireland than were killed during the Troubles. We discovered that 39% of the Northern Ireland population had witnessed a, a trauma that would be related to the Troubles, and that was really, really high. The concern is that the, the effects of those traumas that their parents had witnessed is now um, affecting the next generation, young people in Northern Ireland. To me, it was just a statistic. That's why I felt Stephen was a statistic. Two days after Patricia's son Stephen was sent home by mental health services, he took his own life. They didn't realise he was a much-loved son, brother, uncle, father. And we wanted to hold on to him, keep him precious, because his two brothers died. He was the only son, my only surviving son, left in this family. And they, 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 didn't, they didn't care. They really didn't. 
he was helpless at the end, helpless. And that's what angered me, because I wouldn't want anybody going through what we went through. And I would do everything in my power I could to stop. And something needs to be put in place. Something needs to be put in place to help people like that. To lose someone by suicide, it's just dreadful. And I just honestly cannot explain to you the pain of that. My young son, Philip, had died in 2003, and I had no idea what the signs were of depression or if someone was feeling suicidal. Since losing his own son to suicide, Philip McTaggart now trains people in the community about the signs of depression. Patricia Lowry and Michael Opie have both had training to spot those signs. People isolating themselves away, um, you know, not wanting to be involved with anything, even down to the very thing that, that they're not looking after their own personal care. Sometimes you can see people and they're smiling and they're laughing and everything's okay. And then you'll get that dreaded phone call the next day. And you just, it just, it's just a shock. Where did that come from? These, had, these people had families, had children, they had jobs. But all of a sudden they're gone now. And, and why? Michael owns a gym, a place where people come to look after their physical health. But he's getting people there to open up about their mental health too. And he also offers free gym classes to people with mental health issues. You know, it's hard for a, a grown man and a guy who gives a persona he's such a strong person on the outside to say that he's weak on the inside. And that's the way he looks at it. I wouldn't say he's weak, but that's the way he looks at it. In 2016, 74% of suicides in Northern Ireland were male. With the proper help and the proper counselling, the proper support, you actually feel stronger. For years, we were very silent about the troubles. The first bomb was in an auctioneer's showroom in Great Victoria Street. Minutes later, another bomb went off nearby. We're asking people to talk about their mental health. We're asking people to talk about the troubles. This is a very big ask in a society that has remained silent and fearfully silent for, for so, so long. Growing up in the troubles, it's pretty intense. Um, and you can see, personally, because I grew up in the troubles myself, why coming at the other end of that, you know, there will be certain issues that, you know, people could have. You were sitting in the house, you're a young man, and, and this is, you're a Catholic or a Protestant, doesn't matter, and a car pulled up to your house, you'd be jumping up out of your bed or off your sofa looking at the blinds to see who it was, your door be barricaded every night. There are more people now who have died by suicide than died in the conflict. I, I, that's unbelievable. So, we can't give up. They who shout the loudest is often heard. And I think I should have shouted a wee bit more, in all honesty. But I was so tired and weak. I think that's why I took all the classes up, to give me strength, keep myself going, to do things. It keeps me active and keeps my mind off things. And I enjoy creating things. You know, and it's a great wee class, it's a wee hub, as you see. You know, all the girls here. And it takes things off your mind and it gets you out of the house instead of starting at the four walls. Ooh! <laughs> Tony's totally a square person. It makes me feel like I'm a person. This is me. This is me. This is what I like to do. You know, I can be of some use to the world. <laughs> Northern Ireland already spends about £8 million a year on suicide prevention. But a report for Northern Ireland's Assembly in 2017 said mental health funding here continues to be lower than other regions in the UK. Political turmoil in Northern Ireland. And 20 months ago, the Northern Irish government collapsed. And because there's no government, an enhanced suicide prevention strategy is still waiting to be signed off. It's really, really disheartening to think that we have the strategy that people commented on, went to a lot of trouble to develop, and it's sitting on a shelf and we can't deliver on it because we don't have an executive instalment. The policy changes that are required and the expenditure changes that are, that are required to deliver all the, the new techniques, the new um, activities, we can't actually do that. It takes people and families like myself where we have to put our grieving on hold to campaign to have this strategy released. 
when we look at Scotland a number of years ago had rates that were higher than ours. They had a strategy, they implemented it and the rates did go down. In September 2018, Northern Ireland's Department of Health said publication of the finalised Protect Life 2 strategy in its entirety would of course be beneficial. However, it would be totally wrong and misleading to suggest that support for those who need it is being compromised because of any delay in its publication. They also said that help is available and much is being done to further develop services. I don't think there's much been done, to be honest with you. I don't think they're doing enough. I think there should be more money put in. There should be more people trained up. We are the highest suicide throughout the United Kingdom. And that's what I can't grasp, is why, what, what? If you or anyone you know has been affected by the issues in this film, there is help available.